One of these is edible. Not that one. Today on Fantasy Food Show, I'm going to show you how to make these Dungeons & Dragons candy dice. Let me show you how it's done. To make traditional candy dice, you'll need sugar, corn syrup, and water. This is the same method I used for my calcifer Yule Log Cake a few Christmases back, and if you're going the full sugar route, click the link above to see how I did that. But today, I'm using isomalt, which is a sugar substitute, and you can easily find that in cake stores and online. You'll also need food coloring, and some white powdered food color, candy flavoring, and silicone dice molds. I purchased these from Warcaster Molds on eBay. Rachel, who makes them, was super helpful, and they were really easy to use. Thanks, Rachel. I'll leave a link to them in the description box below. For those of you who've never played Dungeons & Dragons before, Dungeons & Dragons is an adventure role-playing game, typically played with pen and paper, although now there are websites like D&D Beyond that have digitized everything, so it makes it really easy to make a character and keep all of your stats clear, and that's what I use when I play. And uh, as you play through your adventures, you uh, come upon monsters and meet people in towns, and the uh, DM, which is the dungeon master, or the GM, the game master, is the one to coordinate all of these things. So you might be walking along in a dungeon and think, oh, there might be something really weird over here. Let me see if I can uh, perceive something. So your DM might say, okay, make a perception check. So to do that, you would take a 20-sided die, which is, looks like this, and you would roll it, and that would, that's a six. So most likely I wouldn't perceive something with a six, but it really depends on what the DM uh, has behind his or her sheet. So they'll have numbers and they'll say, well, if you have this much, then you'll perceive it, and if not, you won't. And you do that for lots of things. Uh, I want to find food in the forest to survive. Um, I want to see if I can uh, slip a coin purse from a nobleman without uh, them noticing. And they'll say, okay, make a sleight of hand check or make a survival check. And you add this number to whatever your uh, bonus is. And that will depend on your class and the stats that you set up as you create your character. So if you're in battle, you might have to use another one of these polyhedral dice. Um, so let's say that you're rolling for healing word, right? So that's a spell where I can cast a healing word to a creature a distance away and I can heal some hit points. So I would roll a d4 and that's a 3 and I would add that to my spell modifier and that would be the amount of HP restored. And there are lots of other dice. There's a standard d6 which most people are familiar with. There's d10. Where's a d10? No, this is a d12. Uh, here's a d8. So there's all these different dice that you're using in the game. And when I got into it uh, a few months ago, I found all of these really cool clear dice. And as soon as I saw them, I thought, this is dangerous. It looks like candy. I want to eat it. So I thought, I think I'm going to have to make that on my show. So that's why I'm making the candy dice today. To make one set of candy dice, measure out a half a cup of isomalt and pour it into a small saucepan. Cover and cook on medium to high heat until fully melted. Isomalt is often used in many sugar-free candies, and what's nice is that you don't have to add water or worry about having a candy thermometer. Once it's melted, it's ready to use. You may want to stir or swirl the pan a few times just to make sure the crystals are melting evenly. When the sugar is melted, add a little food coloring, and I wanted mine to be translucent, so I only added a little bit. If you want more opaque colors, add more. Add the flavoring, and then swirl to combine. Don't worry if it steams a lot at this point, it's just the moisture from the flavor and the coloring burning off. Pour the melted candy into a heat safe measuring cup, and be careful because it's very hot. Wait a few seconds until most of the bubbles are gone, and then fill the molds. If the candy starts to set up and become difficult to pour, pop it into a microwave for a few seconds to reliquify it. If the mold is overfilled, you can take a little piece of parchment paper, lightly press it onto the top, and gently pull away the excess. Don't worry if it looks messy at this point. It's easy to break off any extra bits once it's set. But just beware that isomalt is harder than sugar, and I definitely got a few cuts myself on those broken bits. It takes about 20 to 30 minutes to cool, and while that's happening, mix a little of the white powdered food coloring with a small amount of clear alcohol like vodka. 
to make a paint for the numbers, which we'll get to in a little bit. When the dice have cooled, they should easily pop out of the molds. Now, it's likely that your finished dice will look a bit dull and have lots of small air bubbles on the surface. I couldn't avoid this when I was testing out the recipe, and even spraying the molds with cooking oil didn't help. But no worries, you can use a lighter or a kitchen brulee torch to lightly melt off that dull outer layer. You can really see the difference here. Then use a small paintbrush to paint the numbers onto the dice. Now when you order the molds, there will be one side that's blank, since that's the side you'll pour into. And you can request that the high side or the low side be blank. I chose the low side, since freehanding a 1 is easier than a 20. And there they are, my Dungeons & Dragons candy dice, ready to roll. Alright, thank you so much for watching today. I have just started playing Dungeons & Dragons, believe it or not a couple months ago with my friends, and we have started a long campaign. I am playing as a level one Air Genasi Bard. So if you play Dungeons & Dragons, I would love to know in the comment section down below your race, your class, your favorite spells, any tips for new players like me it would be super helpful. So let me know. Check out this recipe on our website, fantasyfoodshow.com, and I'll see you soon.